Kids Playground. Hooray! This episode is brought to you by Liquid IV. Step up your game with Liquid IV's hydration multiplier. Just one stick of Liquid IV powder hydrates you two times faster than water alone. So you can finish that ultra dance marathon in your living room. Because real life is extreme enough. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Buy a stick in store or at liquidiv.com with the code podcast for 20% off your order. Diablo 4 has arrived. As the forces of hell gather, only you can stand in their way. Journey across the expansive open world of Sanctuary. Choose from five powerful classes, then progress them to fit your playstyle. Adventure with your friends in up to four player co op with cross play and cross progression on all platforms. Welcome to Hell. Diablo 4, available now. Rated M for Mature. Tap the banner or visit this episode's page to learn more. The Celebrity Jobber Podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, give a five star rating, and leave a review. Check out all our past episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you pod. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. This guy's got a lot of credits to mention. Ton of comedy specials, his most recent, What a Day, and You're Doing Great. Hosted the podcast Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. Played opposite Matt Damon in Steven Soderbergh's 2009 film The Informant. Hosts a radio show on Sirius XM satellite radio called Come to Papa. And the author of several books, including his latest, We're All In This Together. So make some room. Stand-up comedian, funny guy, and our guest this week on Celebrity Jobber, comedian Tom Papa. Hey Tom, how are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? I, I believe I believe we've met. Have you ever? We have. Yeah. Have you ever been to Marco Island? Yes. I think we met there back in the day while uh, you were on tour. And speaking of being on tour, what happens on a typical day? You're out on tour. You got your gig at night for you know an hour and a half or so, maybe two gigs at night. And what mm-hmm. about the rest of the day? What what fills up your day? Um, starts off with coffee and a notebook. Okay. I'll go through, I usually am spend some time writing and going through my act and seeing how, if, what I want to add, whatever ideas I have, kind of like, kind of tune up, spend a couple hours on that. Usually hit the gym at some point, especially if I'm traveling through time zones to keep, uh, nothing like freshens you up and makes you feel a little bit more normal than if you could just sweat a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and then, um, and that's pretty much the day. And then before you know it, you're taking a quick nap and showering up and getting ready for the show. Is it boring out there on the road or is that routine kind of what keeps you sane? Cause I know a lot of stand up comedians and, um, you know, it's tough for some of them. They say it's, it's tough being out there. I don't know. I don't find it tough. I mean, as long as the travel's going smooth, I'm, I'm okay with it. You know, I, I think if you're not working on your act, if you're not writing, if you're not, you know, I, I'm always writing. So it, it doesn't matter where I am. I'm always like, I either have a book deadline or I have my act that night. If I'm working, it's totally cool. If I'm, if you're just drifting around and hanging out and looking for fun and want to watch game shows or drink at night, that that could that's a recipe for a disaster. Yes, <laughs> I I could imagine. You know? I can imagine. Well, yeah. you're, you're a professional. I mean, this, is, this is my third book. And so that's, and it takes me about a year and a half, two years for each book. So that means for the last six, seven years, in addition to my act, I'm, every time I'm on a plane, every time I'm in a hotel, that laptop is opened and I'm going to work. You know, I'm, I'm writing and I'm trying to tighten it up and edit. And there's always something to be done. So I, I, it's, a lot of work, but it keeps you mentally healthy. And, and I think you are a great writer, Tom. And and I think that's probably you know comedy and writing they they go together. Like uh, you mentioned, this is your third book. It's called uh, "We're All in This Together." So make some room. And it's a uh, it's it's what is it? It's just a collection of of short stories that that yeah, are jokes. Comedic, They're fun. They're yeah, funny. Comedic comedic essays. Comedic essays. 
um, there's a theme pretty much that we are all in this together. And as much as people try and act like we all have our own tribes and we're all divided in certain ways, and cable news likes to act like we're all at each other's throats. The reality is, day to day, we're all in this together. And you can learn from the smart ones. You can learn from your family. You can even learn from the dummies that you encounter, you know? All it takes is watching one guy bounce off a trampoline into a ceiling fan, <laughs> and you're like, all right, I'm not going to do that. It's true. It's very true. And, and Tom, let me dig a little deeper here. Um, mm -hmm. You grew up in New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. Um, nice. And you were born. Yeah, I know. I, I should probably stop saying that, but I, I still feel like there's some kind of connection between people that are from New Jersey because it seems like the rest of the world doesn't really care for us, thanks to the Jersey Shore and other shows like that. So I, I always throw it out there, you know. When I look, hey, I'm from Jersey too. Yeah. What you know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yeah, there's some pride there, and that's why I became a comedian. I think you know when you grow up and you're a little kid and you realize your your home state is a punchline to the rest of the nation <laughs> it's true like you learn to laugh at yourself pretty quickly so you were born in Passaic I knew a, a kid named Danny Vettiri from Passaic he wore a jean jacket had really bad acne and you definitely did not want to screw with this guy he was tough and <laughs> I know Passaic was a rough neck of the woods but you didn't grow up there you grew up where yeah a little further north, I was up in uh, Park Ridge in Montel, like northern New Jersey, right nice. on the border of New York. Very nice. And tell me a little bit yeah. about growing up, uh, mom and dad. What uh, did you live with both mom and dad? What kind of um, jobs yeah. did they have? Yeah, we had. Um, I, I grew up in a big Italian American family. We had. Uh, I'm one of 21 grandchildren. Wow! And it was the it was the typical thing where we would meet most weekends over at Grandma's house, and we'd have these big meals and uh, listen to these stories from all my aunts and uncles. And there were a lot of characters, a lot of funny storytellers, and uh, it was a pretty great way to to grow up. It really centered me with family, and you realized how. You just have to laugh at each other and laugh, and, you know, everybody who was uh, it, attacking each other, that was all out of love, you know, if you right. were, someone was mocking you, that meant that they cared about you, and uh, it was a great, it was a great way to grow up, for sure. And, and your dad, what kind of occupation, or what kind of business was your dad in? My dad was a salesman, okay. and we, everyone in the family was Great. Everybody had a regular job. I didn't know anybody in the arts or anything. But as a young kid, I discovered that comedian around seventh grade. I realized when I got introduced to George Carlin and Steve Martin and Bill Cosby, I realized, oh, this could be this could be a job. Like I, I'm not. I was always funny, like with my friends and hanging out at the pool. But when I realized, oh no, there's a job called comedian. That was it. That's crazy to me. The seventh grade, it seems like such a young age to to know what you want to do. I've got a you know 23-year-old kid in, in college, and he's afraid of graduating. He's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, you know, and I didn't know what I wanted to do either. He's kind of stumbled into it. So to know it in the seventh grade that this is where you wanted to go is, is pretty mm -hmm. impressive to me. But what about high school? Like what... What uh, were you big do well in your writing classes in high school? You got good grades. Um, yeah, I got. Uh, I was a, like I, I just did enough to just stay out of trouble. Okay. You know, I whatever I could do to not uh, to not to keep my parents off of me was was my goal. Okay. And you moved to uh, was it Ryder College? You you went to what was your major when you went to school? What what at that point in your life? You're 18. You're 19 years old. Are you still? Hey, I want to be a comedian. Uh, or was it yeah. like a dream, like in the back of your mind, and then you were kind of had a vision of like a straight job somewhere? No, I was always uh, I was always kind of going after that. Wow. It was um, it was. Yeah, I started getting into the theater. I started acting. I started uh, 
anything with the arts, I kind of just kept kept focused on that. It was like uh, I knew for a fact that's where I was headed. So what was your what was your major at Ryder? Uh, communications. Oh yeah, I fell for that one too. But you know, I didn't yeah. land, I didn't land in a <laughs> comedy club, sir. I always get a degree, get a degree, and then you can go out there. Yeah, and that's what I did. That's you know, I thought the same thing. You know, I, but I try to tell young people today that uh, you know it costs the same amount of money for an engineering degree. So you know right. that might not be a bad. <laughs> uh, but you, you turned it around, Tom. So in college. <laughs> Tell me, tell me a little bit. Can you tell me about your first job, your very first paying job, which may not have been comedy? What was the very first job that you held? Um, it was in advertising. R- it was really? A small advertising agency, because at least I could write. At least there was some writing involved. But it only lasted about a year or so before I made enough money in comedy to go off and uh, to go off and and quit my day job. So that was your first job even as a teenager? You didn't, uh, you know, paint houses? As a teenager, or... I, you know, I had tons of stupid jobs. You know, I worked I cut lawns, I worked in restaurants, I did all that kind of stuff. Okay. But yeah, once I graduated, that's what it was that. But advertising is a very creative job for, for creative people. So that's um, that could have been something that you, you know, that you, if comedy didn't yeah. work for you, I could see you being, yeah. you know, in advertising because it is a very creative job. You have to write. You have to come up with some really kooky right, ideas. Exactly. Wow. So yeah, it only it lasted a involved, year. You know? Did it last a year yeah. because you were just not in love with it and in love with comedy? Or did you get fired? I for- knew it was a pit stop. I knew it was just a pit stop. I was going to I was going to be a comedian. So what? I was just wasting time. <laughs> okay. So how did that how did that happen? You're doing some stand up, you're doing some open mics and and I I hear you you actually met a very famous comedian, which I don't I don't know if you consider that your your big break, but uh yeah, what that was the break. Once I met I, are you talking about Jerry Seinfeld. I'm talking about Jerry. Jerry. That was my big break. Yeah. Yeah, cuz as soon as he kind of gave me the uh the approval then it was like everybody else started to uh pay attention so can you tell me a little bit about that meeting was it just uh you know you're just doing your thing you're at the clubs you're in new york and you just run into seinfeld was he jerry seinfeld he wasn't the jerry seinfeld we know today yeah he was coming back to the clubs and getting into stand-up and he didn't know a lot of folks and i was on stage two nights in a row and and when he walked in and he came up and said to me, you're pretty funny. And he goes, uh, he gave me some compliments and I was blown away. And this was right after his TV show had ended and I grabbed onto his coattails and never let go. Oh, it's a great move. I'm, I'm so trying to find a set of coattails, man. Um, (laughs) (laughs) and tell me a little bit about the writing aspect of when that became, because obviously, you know, I I try to be a student of, of comedy. I try to learn Mm -hmm. that it's not just, you're not just up there riffing, trying to make people laugh. There's a real specific art form. There's a premise. There's all these different things and writing when you're really great comedian, writing plays Mm -hmm. such a huge role. And tell me when that like when you connected the dots with with your writing in, in comedy and how that's actually led you to writing books like you're you're doing now. Yeah, well, when, you know, I would finish my act on on the road and I'd be talking about people's families and stuff, and they were like, they wanted to continue the conversation. They wanted to talk more about it, about their families and the funny stuff that happened to them. And I realized, well, there's more to be done here. I can go even deeper. I can be funnier and longer. And I started noodling around with the book idea, and uh, it was really it really kind of worked. As soon as um, as soon as uh, I realized I can like go into like these bigger essays with stuff, I'd be able to uh, um, kind of like carry on this comedic conversation with these people. Right. And um, it, and I just started w- w- working on those books. There's no like life story book out there. They're all pretty much in this type of, you know, like essays and short, there's no, you, you don't have like a biography or an autobiography that you've written. No, 
know, but it, it, but it, they, they definitely are all about my life. You know, it's my perspective. Everything kind of tends to go through family. Um, it definitely has uh, has um, a lot of me in it. You know, it's it, they are personal, um, but it's kind of the same thing with my stand-up. I use my life and I use my experiences, but then launch off of that and go and go further. Is that hard, Tom, to get personal and the other people in your life? Does it ever cause any conflict, whether you write about somebody in the book or you say no, something? I, I'm usually I'm usually pretty kind hearted once in a while. Um, my father, more than anybody else, gets annoyed. <laughs> be like, why are you telling? Why are you telling people I'm like that? Like, well, that's, that's that's who you are. <laughs> Variety says "Shucked" is the surprise delight of the Broadway season, and the Tony Awards agree, nominating the Farm to Fable musical for nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical of the Year. "Shucked," the Wall Street Journal says, it's flat out hilarious, and the New York Post raves. Shucked is the best and funniest new musical on Broadway. Want to get shucked? Visit shuckedmusical.com today. Get ready for an evening of fun at the Howard Theater on October 26th. Danny Pellegrino, the host of Everything Iconic, is stopping by for a live uncensored show. He'll share the hottest takes on all things Bravo and pop culture, from Scandal to The Real Housewives. So pour yourself a drink, gather your burning questions, and get ready to gossip. Plus, each ticket comes with a copy of The Jolliest Brunch. Get yours now at LiveNation.com. Well, man, I, I got to tell you, the, the three books, I think, I think to write one book is incredible. I don't know how I'd even begin. When you start writing a book, does it, like, does it seem like this is something, or, or let's say when you started writing your very first book, did it seem like this mm -hmm. is something that's never going to end? Um it's not that it's never going to end. It's that it's hard to start when you, when you are faced with, okay, I need 300 pages and I have nothing. That, that's a pretty uncomfortable moment. But once you start plowing through and once you start getting stuff down and then you can go back and start reworking it, that's actually a lot of fun. That's like pretty gratifying. Right. Um, it's really the blank page the blank pages, <laughs> that part is pretty terrifying. You don't, what am I going to talk about? What do I, uh, do I even have anything? Yeah. All of that, those kind of thoughts. But if you can get through that, you just got to push and realize it's not going to be great. Just put it down. Just get something down. It, it can be the worst thing in the world. Just do it. Just put it down with no judgment. That's the hardest part of the human being. We judge ourselves. We're very tough on ourselves. You have to let that go and get, keep yourself out of the, keep your judgment out of it. Hmm. And just realize it's going to be bad in the beginning. Right. So just put it down. Just get all the bad stuff down and then go to work and make it better. That's cool. And uh, Yeah, that's the hardest part, but it's, it's definitely doable. Man, you give it a try. Uh, I don't know. Let's uh, baby steps here. Uh, Tom Papa, <laughs> it's called, uh, We're All in This Together, So Make Some Room, his new book, and uh, man, it was great getting to know your story a little bit. And uh, uh, you're, you know, very interesting stuff. Uh, again, a big fan of comedy, and it was uh, great talking to you today. Yeah, you too. I really appreciate it. So it seems like Tom's first job, uh, you know, like uh, typical stuff when you're a teenager, he kind of lumped a, a few of them into the same category, you know, cut lawns, worked at restaurants, all of those quote unquote types of jobs when you're a teenager. But uh, real first job, like out of college, worked in the advertising world. I thought that was kind of interesting because it is a very creative type of uh, occupation, you know, creating advertising campaigns and Tom being, you know, somewhat of a, a, a writer as he is obviously an author slash comedian. He, he does a lot of writing. So that probably kind of played a big part in his uh, first job out of college, which was in the advertising world. And uh, yes, his big break uh, when I read that uh, he met comedian Jerry Seinfeld in the 90s and uh, Seinfeld said like, hey, you're a pretty funny guy. Come along with me. Yeah, I, I think that could have been 
a big break and uh, made no bones about it. That was the break. And then things just kind of opened up for Tom after that. It's amazing that one chance meeting with uh, somebody like Jerry Seinfeld and how that could change your life trajectory. Not only stand-up comedian, author, actor, radio show host. Growing up, Tom's dad was a salesman, a regular job. If Tom didn't meet Jerry Seinfeld, he could have been working a regular job just like his dad or back in advertising like he started right after college. It's that one thing that happens that changes your life. I have a feeling even if Tom was in the world of advertising, he'd be pretty successful. Well, thanks for listening once again. If you like this podcast, don't forget to leave a review. A five-star rating would be much appreciated. And please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It's another episode of the Celebrity Jobber Podcast. We'll see you next week. I'm Jeff Zito.